so this is our session number 14 for uh, selenium java course and uh, today we will see how in the function you put return there is a return statement that we put how to use it why we use it and then we will see about constructor overloading all are like practical case these are required that's why it was invented in the programming so let's make a very simple program let's say related to adding to number okay so if i'll make a program to add to number how it will be it will be let's say i'm making uh return type demo and we'll declare some variables obviously so we'll declare integer a comma b comma c and then we will call a function so we can call let's say addition and we will put a comma b or like any number right and uh, this is function call so somewhere it should be defined so this is our main function scope you are calling a function addition there should be a function defined here so i'm writing it let's say void addition and uh, but is this a good approach to write addition like this no because if you are passing two integer values you have to catch it in two integer values so let's say integer r comma integer t and here then you can say let's say integer y is equals to r plus t and you can then print it then you will print okay addition is plus y okay so what is the issue here the issue is a and b is not diff means it's not initialized yet right so it's saying that you are using a and b but actually there is no value as of now so let's put it let's say a is 12 and uh, b is 24 and now it's perfectly fine this program is very simple what we have written till now is simplest way of uh, finding addition through a function it's like this so how this is working okay integer a b c so what will happen in the background let's draw this that uh, when you write this statement what is happening in the background what is happening in the background is uh, a b and c will be declared so this is a this is b and this is c okay a b c will be declared and uh, just a minute i want to use this so this is uh, a this is b and this is c okay fine and then you fill these values you are filling a is 12 b is 24 okay a is 12 b is 24 but c is still blank we did not fill any value inside c great then we are calling a function addition a comma b so what will it, it will do it will call the addition function so it will jump to 14th line 
A will go to R, B will go to T. So there is another two variables declared like R, which will become like the A value of A will go to R and the value of B will go to the value of B, the value of B will go to what? T. Okay. So now R has the same value what A has and T has the same value what B has. And then you are saying, okay, integer Y. So again, if we talk about how, how it works, so actually there will be again a bracket. There will be again, sorry, uh, memory declared for uh, here, let's say Y. And Y is we have written R plus T. So whatever is the current value of R, and current value of t will be added and uh, that will be the answer so actually r has a t has b so 36 y will become 36 and uh, once that will become 36 because of this line we are printing it we are printing that okay So let's run this program and if you see it's printing me addition is equal to this 36. So is it clear that how this works? You can call this addition function multiple times. That is how usability of function is and then you can pass any integer value. So if I pass 34 and 45 and if I pass minus 9 and uh, minus 34 because negative value is also integer, right? And if I run this program, addition will be called three times with this three, uh, with, with these kind of different values. And the work of this is just to add whatever you will pass it will add both the numbers and it will uh, print it. Right? But when there is a modularity concept, right? Generally, we should avoid printing the things in the function itself. Instead of printing the value here, there should be a mechanism that if I have A, B, C here, and I'm expecting that the addition of a and b should go to c okay. so there should be a mechanism which will say c is equals to a addition of a comma b this will look better right c is equals to addition of a comma b that means whatever is the answer of a comma b addition whatever is the function th this function can be anything multiplication division or anything the answer should go to C. Right. So if we are using equal to sign and you want to assign it to another variable, then actually you should use return statement. So return statement means I will return the value of Y. So what I can see, I can write here return Y. Return Y means I want to do some calculation that's fine for this addition function and then whatever is the answer I want to return it it's like this so if you are returning it you have to add the return type so here you cannot write then void you have to write int why because the value which you are returning is of data type int so whatever kind of value you return though that should be the return type here what happens when you return it when you return anything 
so wherever the function call is there y will replace to that function call so for example here this will become c is equals to y how this will become c is equals to y because you are calling this addition function okay it will jump here it will calculate all those things whatever we have returned and last at last we are saying return y return y means replace wherever you have function called with this y so this will become c is equals to y so ultimately uh, the addition of this two whatever 36 will be there 36 will go to c and then you can print here like uh, sum is equals to whatever you want to print c it's like this so i'm deleting this two line as of now so this is another way of uh, doing the same thing like addition but this is more structured way this is um, more recommended to do right because here it's very clear that this function does something okay and it returns something this function accept two integer values and after the addition it returns it okay and then we when we say return that means you have to capture somewhere right? so once it is written we are capturing it in c it's like this okay and then we are printing it so if we run this program this time it's same sum is equal to 36 it is same let's take another example so return can be anything it's not just integer you have to return so let's uh, make it for if i want to uh, multiply two numbers so we can make another function i'm just copying this and uh, let's say there is another function called multiplication and this function will r cross t and then return y now your question may be like why we are using again r and t right so let's understand r and t are the local variable of this function you can use in another function with the same uh, name because this r and t is no way related to this r and t this r and t is the additions local its own r and t or y these are the local variable for addition function these are the local variable for multiplication function then you can call it so if i call again like c is equals to uh, multiplication of a and b and then i'll print okay it's multiplication result is equals to c so this time if i run this program one time i called summation for the addition and then for the same number a and b we are doing multiplication also so 12 into 24 probably is like 288 so we are getting it somebody is asking any question if c is a float then we can write public static float yes so it depends on the it's not related to c it's related to what is the answer here that we want to return c is just for catching it the real return thing is related to what you want to return i want to return y what is y y is integer that's why i have written here integer it's like this let's make another program so another thing for the return okay so let's say um, there is a function uh, uh, get full name okay and this accepts uh, and you pass here uh let's say raj 
and you put it here let's say sharma okay so this is let's say you are passing this is first name this is last name and this function get full name will combine this two right so there must be a function which will concatenate it so i'm writing it public static void and uh, get full name okay and in the bracket if you are passing two strings then you have to catch it in two strings so string x string y and here's then i can write return return x dot concat y okay in single shot right um okay why is there a problem oh because we have written void right so let me change it to string because you are returning one string you are saying x concat y x concat y will actually concatenate two um strings right together and uh, but it, it won't do anything let me run it it's not doing anything because you returned it but you did not capture it so i write string the string z is equals to this and then uh, we will print it so just concentrate on this two line and this right what we are doing get full name okay there is a function get full name you are passing to a string so if you are passing to a string you have to capture into a string so string x string y x will have raj y will have sharma and then you are saying return x concat y so what is x concat y so raj dot con it's same as we are saying raj dot on cat in the bracket you are saying sharma what is concat function concat function will make it raj sharma right and that you want to return so in the single line i am writing right there will be another line you can add another line like a string p is equals to x dot concat y and then return p right i am doing it in a single line because why to take another variable so return x concat y so this is a string you returned it this will be replaced by this x concat y whatever is the value of that that will go to z and then we are printing it it's like this so if you see here raj sharma it is printing okay it is printing me raj sharma and uh, if you want to put a space in between you can do it like this also so x dot concat space as well as y also this time it should have a space in between that okay fine so this is how return thing work, works you can return if you don't want to do anything with that you just want to perform same thing and return it you can do it in this way yes any time parameter sequence always matters it's whatever sequence of things you are passing in the same sequence you have to like capture it it's not like that you are passing one integer and one float but at the time of capturing it you are taking it as a one float and one integer right or something different so for example let's say um there is another function okay let's make another function i'm making here let's say string um get name and uh, section and zip code okay there is a function where if you pass this 
three things you if you pass first thing is name then uh, section in single quote let's say section b and uh, zip code four double one zero one four let's say and what this function does let's say oh no not this so i string uh, q is equals to this function so just consider of 19th line this particular function get name and section in zip code we have not written it yet this is just function call where there are three values different values one is the string second is a single integer and third one is uh, second one is the character third one is the integer right and this function will combine all these things let's say okay so there is a function public static uh, string this function name you have to catch it so string first one is a string then there is a character and then there is an integer okay and uh, what this function does is we are writing it now we are talking about just 19th line okay so what this function does is let me take one string it's string uh, detail is equals to a plus backslash t plus b plus backslash t plus c so it is just com combining all the values and then return it return detail and here i will print let's say q so what will happen nitesh will go to a b will go to this capital we go to car, car b this value will go to c so if we run this program it is printing me it is p41014 why this is printing because we captured these things in a proper way i cannot write it here a string a and then uh, integer b and then char c right this showing me error it is showing me error because see here if i hover over it it's saying the method this 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 in the type return type demo is not applicable for the argument because you are string int char in your function but actually you are passing a string char and int it's saying that it is a mismatch right so this in the sequence where you have passed the value in the same way you have to capture it so first one is the string second one is the character and third one is the integer so we have to keep in that way okay hope this is clear now that how returns thing or return means you want to return something it, it's not related to that you want to return this thing you i can write return pune let's say it depends on what pro what you want to do with your program if i write return pune irrespective of what calculation you have done it is returning pune so that will print pune only that will print pune only why why it is printing Pune? Because you said return Pune. Even you did some kind of calculation. You don't want to return detail. You re want to return Pune. So what will happen? Wherever your function call is there, that will be replaced by Pune. So string Q will become Pune and you are printing it. It's like this.
So if our question is this, accept the value of n at runtime and calculate below. Anytime, whenever you make a program, you have to understand that how you can break it, how you can break it. So there are three things here. One is accept n. Second is factorial of a given number. Because you have to calculate the factorial like again and again. See here, you have to calculate twos, threes factorial, n's factorial, and then you have to add it also. Add all. So there are three parts in this program accepting the value of n, then one by one you have to calculate the factorial of each number, then you have to add all the number. So let's make this program first so that your for loop concept will also be revised and you will get to know that what is the use of function why function is very important so i'm writing real demo So this is our program let's say we want to achieve okay and so accept how to accept values it's very simple we will say enter the value of n okay you'll make a scanner class obviously scanner object scanner sc is equals to new scanner New scanner system system dot in is our input stream. Then you have to capture it. So obviously you must be having integer n in your place, and then you should have integer sum also, which will be the answer. So for example, once you will calculate all this, the answer will go to a some kind of sum value. So, or any variable name you can give, I'm giving sum. So once you will say enter the value of n, you will get it, right? n is equals to sc dot next int. So now you have n with you. So once you have n with you, if you see this pattern, you have to go from one to n. So there will be a for loop, let's say, for integer x is equals to one, x is less than equal to n, and x plus plus, because you have to increase it one by one. But uh, what we have to do that? We have to calculate the fact factorial of each number. So there should be a function, factorial x. What will it will do whatever is the current value of x it will calculate the factorial of that number and it will give us one factorial value so int fact is equals to or fact of number if i give the name like that then um sum is equals to sum plus fact of number why i'm doing this sum you have to declare it zero also why because initially sum will be zero and uh, done so even even i don't know what is the program for factorial at least as a programmer as a logical thinker my program should be at least this let's say i don't know how to calculate factorial but still I can make program till this and this looks logical that okay you put you got the number n then you want to go from one to n and you want to calculate the factorial of each number once that factorial number will come you want to keep on adding you want to keep on adding so there should be a function which will calculate factorial right so here this for loop is done factorial is independent function let's say so that will be public 
that int because that will return one integer value factorial and uh, it will be received in another variable let's say now now you have to return it so somewhere you have to declare integer let's say f is equals to one then to calculate the factorial again there is a logic so integer c is equals to one c is less than equal to f sorry t c plus plus and here it will be f i'm thinking what will be here f is equals to f cross c am i right and then once it is calculated i'll return f okay so i'll put a debug point so that it will be clear that what is happening one by one so this program is just to calculate the factorial of a given number if you pass five it will give you the factorial of five so let's do it right now even without um, getting this if i say uh, because that is an independent function so i am calling this factorial of uh, four let's say and let's print it directly so i'm doing system dot out dot print ln factorial of four and let me comment this i don't want to run all these things okay so i just want to so our program is very simple it's like uh, factorial four i called so this should give me 24 so i'm just running it to check whether factorial program is fine yeah it's giving me 24 why because i i don't want to discuss the logic why i have written this thing but but it's very simple that cal calculating the factorial is like multiplying it by one into two into three into four so in that way it will work right and whatever is the calculated it will return so okay this is working i'm deleting this so now the main program is this where you want to calculate each number's factorial it will give us the factorial of whatever number you pass and then it will be the sum of factorial so if we run this program it is asking me enter this four oh, oh, oh. okay i did not print it so that is why it is not saying anything so some we have to print so let me print it um, some directly i'm writing some so so by the this logic the answer should be if i pass four it should be 24 plus 6 plus 2 plus 1 that will be 33 i think if i pass 4 so if i'm passing 4 it should give me 32 it's coming so this is how this will work and uh, you should see again this program i'll share this program with you understand it how it is working uh, you can debug this program to understand how uh, in different uh, lines it is jumping and calculating okay let's move to understanding about uh, what is constructor overloading part and uh, for that again let's make a class and here i'm making um check i'm just giving any name so check is just the name of this program and like this here at the class level i am declaring integer a comma b comma c comma t four variables 
and here here we will write check check c is equals to new check here and we will make a display function which will just print a b c d so let's make a function public void uh, display or show value anything you can give it this is this is our function this what you as a programmer you can give any name so let's say if i say um, a is equals to plus a in the same way i want to print a b c d all four values let's say so a b c d i want to print and b is equals to b c is equals to c and d is equals to d done and i'll call this function c dot c dot show value c dot show value done there is no nothing we have written no calculation nothing how this program will work it will start executing from the main function okay it will say okay check c is equals to new check fine creating a new object so when we discussed yesterday that uh, when you create a object right this is the line this is the line where you are creating an object so automatically the constructor will be called but here is no constructor so then you said c is equals to show value okay show value will be called and it will print whatever is the current value of a b c and d so by default all are zero so if you have not defined anything it will be zero now let me make a constructor so i'm making um, C H E C K check and here I am saying uh, A is equals to 10, B is equals to 20. That's it. A is equals to 10, B is equals to 20. Now, how this will get executed? Again, same thing. Execution will start from the main function. It will come here it will say okay you are creating a new object where is the constructor so it will check okay is there any constructor present in this program yes this is present so this will get executed and you are saying a is 10 b is 20 okay it will come back this line is done ninth line will get executed show value so this function is called this will get executed and this time a and b will be 10 and 20 but c and d are still 0 and 0 okay now this is non parameterized constructor you can parameterize also yeah it is no argument constructor right default constructor people use it as a default constructor saying it is a default constructor also but actually default constructor is not returned even if you will not write there is a constructor defined in the background for the class right in the background there is a constructor which does nothing which does nothing right it's like this but this is no argument constructor you created it and actually generally people say this is also a default constructor okay and let's if i make it parameterized constructor what i will write check integer p comma integer q and now i if i'll say that uh, a is equals to p and b is equals to a is equals to p b is equals to q now what will happen let me run this is there anything happening 
No, it's just still same. Why? Because you did not call the parameterized constructor, right? You called constructor which doesn't accept. You are not passing any value. If you will pass it, then only this will be called. Okay. So how you can do that? So instead of writing check C is equals to new check, if I will write, if I will write it like check C 34 comma 56, let's say. Now this time you are creating the object as well as you are passing the value also. You are creating an object as well as at the same time passing value. So constructor is nothing but a function, right? We, we said that constructor is a special kind of function only. So check, it will find out, okay, where is the constructor return which accepts two values? Here is the constructor which accepts two values. So this 34 will go to P and 56 will go to Q. And then you are saying A is equals to 56, B is whatever. A is equals to 34, B is equals to 56. Correct. So this time it will be 34 and 56 for A and B. C and D will be zero because you did not change it. And you can make another constructor. So I'm making it this time if I say in P comma in Q comma in R comma in S and I want to assign it to C is equals to R and D is equals to S plus 50. So calculation can happen here. Whatever it depends on what is your requirement. What you want to do with that. Okay. So this time, what will happen? Let's run this program. So the last constructor is not called. So that will not call means you did not created a object which passes four values. So if you pass four values, then this will be called. Okay. So let's pass four values. Let's make another, ob let's make another object. So we'll make another object check d is equals to not d because d is already here so check e is equals to new check and we will pass let's say 3 comma 9 comma 0 comma 25 what will happen this time and we will call e dot e dot show values e dot show value will actually again show value will be called but that will print e is is object values right so e dot a e dot b e dot c e dot d will be printed right so let's see what will happen with this this time if we pass 39025 it will go here and it will say okay a is p p is q c is r d is s plus 50 so that value will be set and then when you call the show value it will show that particular values for a b c and d so this time if you see we pass 3 9 0 and 25 but it is printing me 75 because we changed it here we said that d is whatever is the current value of s you passed plus 50 so 25 we passed but d will become 75 because of 25 plus 50 okay so this is how constructor overloading works i right? see here constructor overloading means you have the same function name with different parameters different number of parameters and constructor will not have a return type it, you cannot put a return statement here okay it's not allowed for constructor So somebody was asking what are the types of constructor. So we talked about parameterized and non-parameterized. So there, are, there, is, there is no other type. There is super constructor is also there. We'll talk about it when we will do 
uh, inheritance concept. So when we will learn about inheritance, we will talk about superconstructor. One more thing today we should learn is there is a keyword called this, this keyword, P H I S. That's let's check it. So for example, let's make another program to understand this keyword. So I'm making a new program. Hmm. Let's say the name will be worker worker okay done and uh, in the worker we want to no there is no copy constructor in java it's in c plus plus okay so um worker class we want to make and uh, We want to talk about this constructor so here if i declare some variables let's say integer id string name and uh, double salary okay and here i want to make an object so i'll write worker w is equals w1 is equals to new worker and then i want to make one constructor so that will be worker and here i'm writing this dot id is equals to minus 99 this dot name is equals to null this dot salary is equals to minus 99.99 so this is a keyword which is used to represent which is which represents current object which represents this represents current object so when you write this as a keyword there is no ambiguity and, uh, it how it how does it work you have created w is equals to new worker it will call here and it will set w1.id is equals to minus 99 w1.name is equals to null w1.salary is equals to minus 19 it's like this because you are your reference is w1 so what happens with the this keyword is whatever is the current reference you are using right it will put it there so there may be multiple right so there may be multiple objects so i can have worker w2 also so why there is no confusion to the java that whose value will be like minus 99 name will be null or salary how this will resolve wherever you will write this it will it will understand based on how you have called it and what is the current object at that moment okay <clears throat> this is how this works so i can let's say again same thing display you can make to print all those things so if i make a function uh, public void display which will just display these three things so if i write System dot out dot print ln. See here how we should write. This is a good way to write the program. So this dot id plus backslash t plus this dot 
name plus just for the separation i'm writing backslash t for putting tab this dot salary so this is how if you will call uh, w2 dot display so that will print the um, w2's values right id and name and salary so if i run this here it is printing all this thing if we will change it if we will change this you can change it explicitly w dot id is 78 w sorry w2 dot uh, name is equals to testology let's say and w2 dot salary is equals to 9976.78 something like this and then again call w2 dot display okay. so this time if you see the overwrite the value which was minus 99 null and 99.99 what you did you you changed it you changed it by w2 dot id is 78 w2 dot name is equals to this w2 dot salary is this and then you call w2 dot display w2 dot display this display functions work is just to print whatever is the current objects id current objects name current object salary what is the current object current object is w2 here because you are calling it through the w2 it's like this if you call it for the w1 w1 will become the current object it's like this so it, it has no confusion you are calling it through w1 so this will become w1 it's like this so if we see here again it is printing minus 99 null and 99.99 why because for the w1 the values are still this three we did not overwrite it we did not change it